I rested in the arms of my arms. I slept no longer. It was summer, night, winter, day. An internal shiver of thoughts. Fear love, fear love. Close the window, open the window. Dora Maar was a very important photographer, surrealist photographer in her own right long before she met Picasso. She was actually, of the photographers of her time, one of the few ones who was making a living with her work. If we look back at what she accomplished in her lifetime, it's something that is really inspirational. She knew what she wanted to be. She wanted to be an artist. She was quite politically active and took pictures of the poor who were suffering from the economic crisis of the time. She took some really incredible pictures of old, old British people uh, begging in front of banks, you know, um, and, and children, street children. She seemed to have, she would get down on their level. She, you can really feel her in her pictures that she was very much more tender and empathetic, compassionate. And it was kind of extraordinary because she's a young, unmarried woman in a time when women didn't have the right to vote in France. So that she was able to be really respected and also earn a living is quite, quite astonishing. She wasn't, you know, joyous. She didn't, she didn't get a lot of pleasure out of life. You know, she was one of these kind of hard, stubborn, slightly, you know, always sad kind of people. But um, I think she's quite talented. I think she would have achieved a lot more had she not been kind of cast as the mistress of Picasso. So that's how she was always, is always spoken of and remembered, kind of under the shadow of him. The question about how Dora and Picasso met is an interesting one. She knew who Picasso was. He's a rock star and she wanted to meet him. She actually played this knife game at the table to get his attention. And she starts playing with a knife, like with her hands splayed out, going faster and faster. Eventually, you know, she would hit a finger and she started to bleed, and, and Picasso was completely enthralled by that, and it was just so startling. She is kind of the essence of a career woman. She's tall, she's poised, she's sharp. For Picasso, when he met Dora Maar, he thought of photography as being kind of just a scientific tool. Dora Maar kind of opened Picasso's eyes up to the possibility, what you can do with the camera. She was strong and into intellect. She understood conceptually. She's an activist in a way, and she really helps push him to the largest expression of paint on canvas to date that also is bringing to the attention of the world these atrocities that the Spanish government is visiting on the Spanish people. So Guernica is like a work unto itself. She showed him the photos of Guernica and that's how he did that painting, his, his masterpiece. And she had the idea of photographing the process. He allowed her, he'd never let anyone do that before. He painted the light bulb in the middle of Guernica as, as a symbol of her presence there. In terms of a look at Picasso's artistic process, we wouldn't have that without Mars' documentation and perhaps inspiration. I think it was an incredible moment, probably that was a moment in their relationship where they were the most fusionnel, the most like really working together. She would take the pictures, he would look at them, they would talk about it, the, the painting was evolving side by side. I think for her that was really like the high point in the relationship and really exciting for her. Guernica was a documentation of the first time that a country had actually deliberately bombed civilians. When we, when we think about that and we think about what Picasso was capable of showing and creating this great emotion around, he was as destructive as the Spanish government was towards his own people in his relationships. Picasso did uh, many, many portraits of Dormar, and they evolved during the relationship. And I think that was a very painful thing for her to see as well, because it was almost like a mirror to, uh, to what he felt about her. At the beginning, there were these really beautiful, uh, almost sometimes quite realistic portraits of her. And then sort of with the period of Guernica, he starts to do these, these sort of iconic women who are just rended by grief and you know, weeping. And that's what she became, the weeping woman. And 
The problem too was she was going through grief. She found out she couldn't have children. Her mother died, she had gone through the war, things had happened that were very traumatic for her. And also she was probably often crying to him, begging him to be nicer to her or that, you know, to forgive her for being so angry or whatever. And so she was crying a lot. And in the end, his weeping women became her. And she's sort of known that way. And I, I think that was very, very painful and difficult for her at the end, after him, to come out of that. To, she, she was sort of stuck in this one time in her life, the way he portrayed her. They had huge fights, screaming fights. You know, I think they threw things at each other, I think. And then at the same time, I think they had equally passionate making up afterwards. So it was one of those very kind of stormy relationships. Also, it's important that Picasso established from the get-go, and he was really clear and honest about it, that he was not monogamous, that he was married, and he also had Marie-Thérèse a mistress with a child, and that she had to accept that. That was not a question, because she was jealous and possessive, and she didn't really want to share him, and yet she was... From the beginning, she was told that was the only way. She wanted him to recognize her, but I don't think she ever thought she could be equal to him. She is a complicated person, and she never had another relationship. She said, after Picasso, there's only God. She became a little paranoid, right? Um, extremely committed to Christianity. Health and hygiene, we could call her a border, maybe. She could have if she wanted to have lived differently, but it was the way she didn't care. As she became more and more involved in her own painting and her own thoughts and her own poetry, all the stuff of the, the, the outer world, of the mundane world became less and less important to her. In a way, that relationship defined the limits of her life, I feel like. She had to just figure out how to negotiate being only seen as his mistress which didn't really work very well, but is maybe working now. Like people are finally now talking about her in her own right. There aren't that many single artist exhibitions. There are even fewer that go to blue chip institutions like the Pompidou, some of the world's most important, most significant museums. And the fact that Dora Maar is the subject of her own show being exhibited at those institutions really shows that she has been assessed by the best art historians and scholars and curators in the world and she has been seen as just as worthy of interpretation on her own and on her own terms as artists like Picasso. One of the strategies that she had to take on in her second part of her life um, after Picasso was uh, kind of to re retreat from the world and retreat from the art world and not be that kind of stubborn person that, that with a lot of agency that she had been as a young girl because she had to protect herself from, from the circus around Picasso and from what everyone would always see and always judge her in terms of him. And I think she had in her mind a kind of strategy like, I'm gonna do my work, I'm gonna do my work in peace and eventually someday people will recognize me. In art history in the 20th century doesn't really acknowledge the role of women artists. It's not until the 21st century that you start to see feminism um, and gender that allow us new ways to consider the contributions of these very accomplished artists. Right now, is, and certainly, um, hopefully it's not just a blip and it's a real movement, but there's a real recognition of how many female artists have been looked over and not recognized, and how few museums have women artists or have given them major exhibitions. Because people said, look, if you look at the number of male artists and the number of female artists that you've recognized, it's just, it's ridiculous. So there is a kind of movement now to say like, okay, what have we overlooked and who have we not really given a chance? And I think Dormar is gonna, is one of those women who has, has had an immense talent and wasn't, you know, seen. So hopefully, maybe things will change. The soul that still yesterday wept is quiet, its exile suspended, a country without art, only nature, memory magnolia pure so far off, I am blind and made from a bit of earth, but your gaze never leaves me, and your angel keeps me.